Referee calls them in. Jared Fletcher of Australia against Craig McEwen of Scotland. Craig McEwen, the Scot, a southpaw, or a switch hitter, actually. He started off southpaw in the orthodox stance now. Gives his occupation as a full-time boxer, Craig McEwen. He was very classy against his Tongan opponent, uh, Tavita Fanua, stopping him in round three. The Australian's philosophy is to give it 100% and have no regrets. I noted, noted in his uh, victory over Obadai Say from Ghana that uh, Jared Fletcher, once he warms up, he boxes beautifully. He's had a heap of experience. As you said, 142 amateur bouts, 120 wins. That's certainly ample experience. And he's on the board with three points here, the Australian. Good start. Craig McEwen, all equally experienced. He was uh, on the bronze in Manchester in 2002. Hasn't been in the Olympics before. Australian walked into one there, but uh, got one back. Jared Fletcher looking, that's it. Landed the right hand against his South Core opponent. He's handling the southpaw well at the moment. Well, 142 fights. He would have fought a stack of them, I would think. Both got a point there in that exchange. This is going to be a tough fight for both boys. They both had a lot of experience. Know their way around a boxing room. Well, there it is. A very eventful round one. The referee didn't have to do much. And Jared Fletcher of Australia being awarded the fight eight points to two by our five judges. Let's go back to some of the action. Jared Fletcher a little bit over eager there. Running in, doesn't want to leave himself open. Standing in the corner with uh, the Australian Institute of Sport coach Bodo Andreas with his back to us. Born in Mowie in Victoria. Now leaving in Harvey Bay in Queensland. He idolises Kostya Zoo, as uh, so many boxers do. Previous results for Craig McEwen. Craig McEwen's victory over Pavinder Singh from India was a bit of a bit of a. Bit of a messy one, but at least he won, 16 to 15. Third round of this middleweight quarterfinal between Australia, the second round between McEwen and Fletcher. Fletcher, a strong middleweight. Oh, good solid in place. Beautiful right hand from the Australian there. Yep, as you said, the South Coast stance not bothering the Australian representative in the middleweight division. He got, caught, caught, there. Yeah, he got caught with that one coming in, but uh, generally doing a pretty good job against his South Coast opponent. The Scotsman now in the orthodox stance, left foot forward, leading with the jab. Left jab. Trying to confuse Fletcher. Under a minute, 50 seconds in round two. A big lead, eight points. 4-2 in this round to the Australian, scored by the judges. The right hand again there, that was good. McEwen switch hitting, he's back to orthodox now. Trying to confuse the Australian. Both these guys would have fought so many varied, styles, varied styles of opponents over the years. Nothing much would surprise them, I would think. 
15 seconds. Big lead to the Australians. Scott coming after him, trying to nail him close to the bell. They get in close. And there it is at the halfway stage of the quarterfinal. And Australia's Gerard Fletcher has won both rounds, 8-2 in the first and 4-2 in the second. There's Fletcher launching himself at uh, the Scotsman Craig McEwen. McEwen fired back with double-handed body punches there. there. Waiting for him to come to you because he's got your measure. You have to go to him and you have to beat him with your shots. One, two, step around. One, two, three, four. Because if you don't, you're going to be 20 points. That'll be good, one. 20 pointers. Well, that's 20 pointers. I think it's really good, wasn't it? Now, come on. Get off your butt. Get out there and do the job. I do whatever he said. Bit of, uh, well, sort of backhanded psychology there from the Scottish quarterman. I mean, say? the margin is only eight. I don't think it's going to be a 20 point job. What did he say exactly? I didn't catch what he said. He said you don't want it to be a 20 point job going down. Okay. Third round between Fletcher and McEwen. The Australian was a handy lead, but certainly not an unbeatable one. You yeah, know, McEwen's. Scotsman, a very adept boxer indeed. But uh, Jared Fletcher is in control at this stage. Scotsman flurry to the body, then came over to the head. Didn't get much recognition for it. 2 1 Fletcher this round. Now hitting behind the neck. Fletcher looking for the right hand. His opponent boxes out for you. Glancing blow. Oh, nice right hook from the Scots part of there, McEwen. Good lord, too. Drops a little left hand in there, didn't get a point for that. <laughs> no, the Australian middleweight here got a good lead, boxing well. 13 points, it's a large lead, 30 seconds remaining round three. What can the Scots fighter do, Craig McIntosh Mac McEwen? Well, he needs a, almost needs a knockdown now, or knockout. He needs a knockout, he does. The Australian, Jared Fletcher, boxing well. In control. It's been a good round for the Australian, his best so far. He scored nine points. He's looking confident. He knows he's got a good lead. Boxing beyond his left jab. Moving, moving around well. There goes the bell for the end of round three. It was a 9-3 round to the Australian, as scored by our five judges. 21-7 with one round to go in this quarterfinal. Alberto looking pretty cool in the corner. Yes, and so is Jared, Jared Fletcher. He must be feeling very confident at this stage. He's got an unassailable lead. Uh, barring a knockout. Barring a knockout, that's right. Going into the fourth and final round. Well, I think a knockout's very unlikely. Crowd getting stirred up by the ring announcer into a frenzy now as we go into the final two minutes of this middleweight quarterfinal between Jared Fletcher of Australia and Scotland's Craig McEwen. The Scot with the job ahead of him. Can he come back? McEwen needs a knockout, but I tell you what, at no stage has Jared Fletcher been hurt in this fight so far, and I, I don't think I don't think it's going to happen. And uh, he's on his way through, I reckon, to the semis. I mean, maybe I'm being a bit premature. We've still got a minute twenty. 
but he certainly has boxed well here against a very classy opponent in Craig McEwen from Scotland. Just needs to stay out of trouble. And Scott needing a knockout to win the fight. Fletcher looking pretty fit. He knows he's got a huge lead. He's not overextending himself here. He knows all he has to do is get through the round. And he uh, can see the gleam of those medals. That's for sure. McEwen's tried everything. He's been orthodox. Oh, oh, solid right hand from the Australian. Should oh. be what a good finish. He's going to get an eight count put on him here. He was off balance. Two beautiful shots. A right hand, left hook. Good work. 15 points the margin. A good display from Fletcher. Oh, nice little uppercut. The crowd like that. And have a look at McEwen. A bit of. Show voting for McEwen there too. He knows he's lost the fight. No, he's been too solid, the Australian. Look, the Scotsman knows the fight's out of his reach. And I think uh, he'll show a lot of respect for the Aussie when the bout's over. Crowd counting down now, as traditionally they have been doing. It's going to be a big win to Australia's Jared Fletcher. And he's into the semi-finals of the middleweight division here at the Melbourne Exhibition Centre. 27-10, a very large margin. And the slow-mo there, that's where McEwen nearly went over the top rope. Got caught with a right hand and a left hook. And that's a beautiful shot. Jared Fletcher winning every round, 8-2, 4-2, 9-3 and 6-3. And he is through to the semi-finals. He's in the bottom half of the draw. His opponent yet to be decided. The boys come back to centre ring for the official announcement. The Noisy Mabli map from Cameroon will soon be holding aloft the arm of the Australian. Crowd love it. Jared Fletcher through to the semi finals. And his opponent between the next bout on the card. We'll find out who that is shortly. Second semi final of the featherweight division Luke Jackson of Australia and Lassie Marula of Pakistan. In the featherweight division, we haven't seen too many Australians taste success. In fact, Wally Taylor won Australia's only gold medal in this division, and that was in Cardiff way back in 1958. Marula backing away, drawing Luke Jackson onto him, looking for an opening. Luke Jackson very sharp in his previous bouts. He uh, has been putting his punches together very well. He's a an orthodox boxer and the irrevative novice in the caper there he's been he, boxing only two or three years he, he has and he's done incredibly well so far the man in blue marula would have uh, far more experience expect uh, won the tasmanian championships after not even a year taking up boxing he would have thought that, that would have scored but uh, maybe he's a bit uh, ridden off the shoulder of, of marula Marula is hard to catch cleanly. Both opening very cautiously in the first minute of the fight. And the Australian gets the first shot, which will be applauded by the crowd here. They're pretty knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable crowd. I've been amazed all the way through how good they've been. Not quite a capacity crowd today, which is perhaps surprising. Rula still trying to land his first scoring punch. Jackson doing a good job of defending at the moment. In fact, both of them ultra-cautious. 
Very, very cautious. Yep. Need the fighters really open up yet? Jackson from Tasmania. Look for a roofing company there, and uh, finally, both boxes on the scoreboard. Well, it lands a good right hand there as we come up to the bell for round one. A dead even round, one all. Very low scoring affair. Can't get much lower. Jackson scoring the first scoring punch of the fight and Maru with the second and that was it so uh, the judges didn't have bit too much to do in that round boxes owe them points Jackson's surprisingly cool he's uh, got, a, got a cool head boxing well with his hands held high well, Jackson results on points 17-9 12-5 18-12 so yeah, the list, Barry, fairly low scoring affairs. And this yeah. one looks like being the same. Yeah, no, Luke Jackson's bouts have been relatively low scoring. Um, the rules are a bit higher. You know, 38 20, 22 8, 25 11. His victories. Um, I'm not sure it's going to warm up. They're feeling each other out in the first round. Well, a low scoring affair, the crowd fairly quiet. The ring announcer trying to jeep them up. Second round of Luke Jackson against Lassie Marula. Just two effective punches in the first round. Good right drive to body from Luke Jackson. Winner to fight Stephen Smith for the gold medal at the weekend. Loser of this bout to receive one of two bronze medals awarded. Pakistani fighter Marula, one point up here. Still very even. Both boys having trouble landing clean shots. Both very good defensive fighters. Look at the way uh, Jackson pulled that away, that, that blow to the body. Picks the headshots off well. Marula, two up now. Good round for the Pakistani so far. Under a minute to go. Jackson would like to get on the board with a couple more here before the goal. I'm sure Pakistani may be pulling away here. Crowd realising that. Trying to get behind the Australian, but they're fairly quiet at the moment. Marula starting to get on target now. Boxing low. 6-2 in the round. Picking Jackson off. As he's coming up. And again. It's a good right hand from Jackson, but uh, his score's been doubled now. He needs more of the same to stay in the bout. He's evaded those shots well. Ten seconds coming up, ten seconds remaining. Round two. A good round for the Pakistani boxer Marula. Very, very shifty. Boxing well. Not getting caught, moving beautifully. A little bit too clever in that round, the Pakistani. And according to our five judges at ringside, it was an 8-3 stanza to him after one all in the first round, and he goes to the halfway stage with a handy lead of nine points to four. Go downstairs, see if we can pick up the ringside advice. semi-final between Lassie Marula and Luke Jackson and Jackson got his work cut out for him now after the Pakistani took the second round eight points to three. Pakistani a very cagey fighter, boxer fighter indeed. Moving very well in round two and uh, drawn away to a pretty reasonable lead. Luke Jackson certainly needs to uh, draw it back here if he's good. The Australian's going to stay in this bout.
forcing the Australian to miss. Miss with every shot there. They knock down, of course, and just off balance. Box on. Jackson pressuring, he knows he has to get some clean shots on the board. Proving very difficult to hit. Lassie Marula from Pakistan. Yeah, Marula's uh, confidence is up. He's uh, worked the style out in the Arab Australian. He's moving well, he's moving in and out. Marula. Luke Jackson putting the pressure on him, but he's very, very cagey and very experienced, the Pakistan boxer. Jackson got to try to notch up a few points to get closer by the end of the round. It's going to be a tough final two minutes otherwise. Yep. Under a minute remaining, round three. You reckon if he's within five, he might be a chance. But he's, a, he's a still a chance within five, but it's, uh, it's, it's not going to be easy. Marula is very cagey. Not frightened to fight on the back move, gets it out to six now. Coming up to the last half minute of round three. A very clever fight, Maruva. Yeah, we've seen Jackson's previous fights, he's punched and has been pinpoint, but he's fighting a much cagier opponent here. Maruva, very hard to hit cleanly, using the ring well. Good, good left and right there from Maruva. Now scoring the Australian 6 3 in the third round. A clear and round. Again, those two shots from Jackson missing the target. Pakistani keeping on the move. Coming up the bell. There it is for the end of round three. Now five judges scoring at 7 3 to Lassie Marula over Luke Jackson of Australia. So a margin of nine coming into the final round, and that makes it very difficult for the Australian, missing with all three there and off balance ultimately. Yeah, that's a big lead to take it in the last round. Luke Jackson's going to find it very tough. The Australian representative is, uh, looks as though he's going to have to settle for the bronze here against his very cagey Pakistan opponent, Marula. You will never win the fight. You're going to fight Stephen Smith, Swifty Smith of England. In the gold medal. About Saturday Australian time. All right. Yeah. Yeah. be saying to him. Certainly needs to lift it. He's telling him to get out there and find it. Lift his work rate, but it's going to be tough. Fourth and final round of this featherweight semi final between Luke Jackson of Australia and Lassie Marula of Pakistan. And the latter well on top. Jackson almost needing a knockout to uh, advance to the gold medal. Playoff, that is, or box off. Now he's in gear. Can he keep it going? He's got nine to make up. It's a lot to make up in one in two minutes. It's a hell of a lot. More of the same, says Six the crowd. Now. He's done well so far. He's putting the pre Oh, good right hand from the Aussie. What a comeback. Five points in it. Box on. He has a chance. He must keep going. Pity Jackson didn't do this in the preceding round. Yeah, would, uh, you'd ask why, Barry. He would be in a better position, that's for sure. And we all are out to six again. He'll be determined not to get caught by too many more like that. Pakistan, Pakistani uh, corner man looking quite nervous there still. A minute to go in the fight. Still Marula leading by six. Jackson tries to tie him up in the corner. The Pakistani holds on. It's a caution from the referee. Jackson working overtime. Six points under a minute to go. It is possible. But not probable. Very cagey fighter, Lassie Marula. Time perhaps going to beat the Australian here. And a very cagey opponent. Very cagey opponent, using the ring well. Moving away, counted there, got back on the board. No, out of reach now. Seven points, 35 seconds to go. He's just too clever, Marula. Very clever. He knows he's got the bout one, just wants to stay out of trouble. Luke Jackson, for a relative novice, novice has done incredibly well at the games here. He's going to have to be content with the bronze this time, but uh, got a good future, this lad. Lassie Marula. Ten seconds. Ten seconds away from contesting the final in the featherweight division. 
Jackson still trying to tag him around the ring to land the big shot. Can't do it. And there's the bell for the end of the contest. And it will be a win to Lassie Marula in the blue corner from Pakistan. And he will be involved in the gold medal fight on Saturday Australian time. Luke Jackson from Australia will receive the bronze medal. He was just too classy, Barry, wasn't he? Just too crafty, too much experience. Um, yeah, you know, he's a, he's a very good boxer, the, the uh, Pakistani. But Luke Jackson did Australia proud. He walked up, he made, had a big comeback at the start of the fourth round. But again, Marua just too, uh, too clever over the distance. He looks very happy with himself, and so he should. Your winner. The official announcement from ringside. The blue corner from Pakistan, Lassie Marula. Victorious on points over Luke Jackson of Australia. Jackson won the last round 6-4, but it was the only round in which he was successful. The first was tied at one each, remember. And 20-7, to seven, the final margin in favour of the Pakistani. The side very clever boxer of Southpaw in the blue, the gal from England. And uh, Jared Fletcher has boxed very well so far. This is going to be his toughest contest to date, I believe. First round, Jared Fletcher of Australia, James DeGale of England, and our special guest commentator, former world heavyweight champion, George Foreman. I see my, uh, the Australian opponent uh, trying the, the left hook. That's kind of the hardest shot to really get a soft power with. You really got to lead a lot with your right hand. And you see he's easily, they can hardly, a soft power can hardly get away from a right hand lead. Yes, yeah, so we've seen a lot of southpaws in the competition, George, and I've emphasised that uh, when the southpaw leads, he's right. That's the time you throw your right hand straight down the middle. You can then, miss them. Then come up with the left hook if you can. Oh, see? Good right hand by Jared Whoa. Fletcher. Our Australian guy's got some stuff there. He has. He's uh, been looking pretty good in his previous bouts, and uh, this is, I think, Degal the cleverest fighter he's fought so far in the competition. Degal is kind of smart because he's foxy enough to make you start playing that softball game by keep reaching yep. with his right hand, just reaching it out and to throw your jab off. But you've got to be confident enough to continue throwing your left jab. It doesn't matter whether you're softball or right hander, keep doing it. How did you like fighting the southpaw? I hated it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me, me too, to be honest. Jared Fletcher has uh, had a number of bouts in the amateurs. One, 120 of his 142. And the goal is a good combination puncher as well. Yes, he's classy. He, um, he scored a couple of big wins, uh, a TKO two over the New Zealander and a first round TKO over the, TKO over the Fijian. And his last fight was a points win over the Kenyan, Shisi, a 24-11. So he's uh, certainly proving a very good opponent, James DeGaulle. And... Uh, our opponent from Australia has got to remember, you cannot stand in front of the soft powers not doing anything. This is what they hope for you to do. Yeah, you should be moving around to the left. Uh, he? Always throwing punches. Don't be afraid to throw punches. That's their job, is to make you afraid to get off. Very even round, close to the bell. And there it is, the bell for the end of round one. And the judges scoring at three points apiece between Jared Fletcher of Australia and James DeGale of England. George, you certainly showed against Michael Moore how to fight a, fight a southpaw when you <laughs> dropped that right hand on yeah. him and uh, re-won the heavyweight championship. It was sensational. Well, I, I like the uh, Australian opponent. His name again? Jared Fletcher. Jared Fletcher. Fletcher is an outstanding boxer. You can see his moves are more suited for professionals, though, because he's dropping his hand, showboat. We're going to love him in the pros. <laughs> <laughs> George, what do you have? Amateur boxing now has changed quite a bit, but uh, you know what have you got to say? There's a lot of people out there, you know, a lot of anti-boxing people, but uh, it is a safe sport. What, what do you say to mothers and fathers out there whose children want to get into amateur boxing? Oh, amateur boxing especially. You see the headgear, and they've got these protective cups. Boxing couldn't be any other safety. Now they come now for the second round. Three points apiece, Fletcher and DeGale. Even fight at this, at this stage, 5-4. Four, four. The Englishman just a point in front now. Just snuck in front. Fletcher's got to get that right hand going down the middle. 
looking for it. And I think that was a good exchange because even after Fletcher Landers combination, he tried to get a few more in. With a softball, you hit him once, definitely come back with two more just to get yourself back into position. Yep, always try to get back to the orthodox stance and yep. get away to the left left of the uh, of the southpaw's powerful left hand, which is generally, generally a southpaw's most power, powerful punch is the left hand. Most guys make the mistake of once you land that straight hand, you just stand there and wait to see the result. But yep. don't do it. Keep throwing punches. Pretty even at the moment. The gal, very clever. It's the tall English southpaw. Just three scoring punches in the round. Two to the gale and one to the Australian. Now he's tied it up. And so he had to get on with that one. And I think Fletcher will be successful if he just go forth and throw punches. Don't wait. And his corner should be telling him, don't wait for the action. Someone's got to start the fight. Be the one. Yeah, with us, I agree with the southpaw. You need to, when you land punches, keep them going. Keep them on the back foot if you can. Yep, backing up. Backing up at all times. Oh, good left hook from Gretchen. Mm -hmm. Doing a great job, but he's still waiting to get that good shot in. And you're not going to get a good shot in. You just got to throw a lot of shots, and hopefully two or three will get in. Still 3-2 in the round to DeGale. I think uh, Fletcher was a trifle unlucky there. There's a couple of punches, I thought. But as you know, George, we've got five judges, and they all have got a red and blue button, and three of them must press the button at the same time to get a point. Oh, that he was down, but... Uh, not happy with one on the back. Anyway, the bell goes for the end of the round. The judges scored a 3-2 to James DeGale. And a very... Narrow fight so far. Six points to five in favour of the Englishman. What would you uh, what would you tell Fletcher in the corner, George? Yeah, right now tell uh, Fletcher to go forth, lead with the right hand, and don't stop for one second. This is your chance of a lifetime. You just can't sit and wait for an opportunity. Create the opportunities by getting busy. Yep. Are you afraid of getting tired? Hey, this is the time to get tired. Are you sure? We've only got uh, four minutes of competition left. Two two-minute rounds. He does, and it's the uh, chance of a lifetime for Jared Fletcher, the middleweight Australian representative. Crowd getting behind these two. They come out now for the third round. Jared Fletcher in the red. James DeGale in the blue. Third of four. Fletcher needs to get on target with a good one straight away to get back into the bout. But James DeGale boxing very cleverly at the moment. Might be taking a point, yeah? It's very odd, but that's <laughs> boxing. That's boxing. Two we, points. Two points, yeah. We've seen quite a few strange things, but uh, generally, George, overall, the officiating has been uh, very good. The, yeah. the uh, scoring system... You know, there's been a lot of criticism of it, but so far we think it's, you know, the majority of the time it's been spot on, really. That's good. And, you know, the good thing about uh, the judging system in the amateurs, it's evolving all the time. Yep. It'll be perfected pretty soon. <laughs> Certainly better than it was 20 years ago. I'll say that. Very <laughs> narrow fight. The Australian yeah. and the Englishman going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, so those two points could be vital in the context of this bout. They could be. It's only one point in it. And I think the goal is just getting a little aggressive now. He may be pulling away with it if he's not careful. He's not waiting as before. Did Fletcher count? should be a bit more active. Oh, that was a good right uppercut. Excellent punch from the Australian middleweight representative, Jared Fletcher. Mm -hmm. Back to a point again, though. The gal fires back. When you're fighting at this level, you got to be certain that every guy you get into the ring is going to give you a fight from opening bell to ending bell. There's no rest. Well, we've seen a few that owe points to the judges, but <laughs> very low scoring affairs. We had one bout earlier in the week that didn't score a point in the first round, both boxes. And these two with a great deal of respect for each other. 40 odd seconds remaining, round three. Still a very a nip and tuck affair indeed. 
And I like it because they're evenly matched. Yep. And that's what you find in the amateurs. Yeah, it's these it's games equal equally matched. Good athletes, it's dead even now, nine all. So to get the feeling it's gonna go right down to the wire in the next round. Nothing between these two guys. You gotta understand, you only get points when you land punches. And so why stay back? Good question. And you gotta tell the fighters in the corner, get your points by landing point punches. De Gaulle, the Englishman, away to a one-point lead as we hear the bell for round three. One round to go in this middleweight semi-final. The winner to fight off for gold on Saturday as we go to a replay of the round. That Ooh, was a big right hand. Lovely uppercut right at the start of the round. That was a ripper of a, a right uppercut. A d difficult punch to land an uppercut, eh, George? These guys are well conditioned. They are. Now, those Credit. at home watching this, you better understand, to go two minutes <laughs> Throwing punches like that and being hit is such a difficult task. You're looking after yourself these days, George, speaking oh, of well conditioned. Oh, yes. I used to eat a dozen cheeseburgers. <laughs> now I only eat 11. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say you've cut down. <laughs> so here we go. Final round. Years of preparation will go down to two minutes of boxing. That's Jared it. Fletcher, James DeGale, the last round. Who's going to fight for the gold medal on Saturday? Will it be the Australian in the red or the Englishman in the blue? The Englishman leading by two. The Australian back with a point. Anybody's fight at this stage. It certainly is nip and tuck. It's going to go right down to the wire. I hope Fletcher understands that when, the, when there's no action, DeGale is happy. When there's action, he has to go backwards. Just got to throw punches at all times. Well, they've both got to throw them now. It's dead even again with a minute and a half to go. The Aussies hit the front with a point. Australia one point up over England here. Round four, the semi-final in the middleweight division. Two up. Crowd riding every punch here. Very knowledgeable crowd, George. They uh, understand the scoring system very well, the crowd. And that's great because the fans know what's what's ahead. They can see it coming. No one is caught by surprise. Yep. But I do like the goal too. He's got heart. Oh, definitely. He's got good. heart. Very good boxer indeed. Worthy of a final, this one. It is. It sure is. DeGale. A couple DeGale. of points behind. He knows he's got to work. Two points in it. 56 seconds remaining. Australia and England. It's nip and tuck. Still anybody's fight at this stage. Fletcher should not be backing away, though. This is the time to stay forward. Be the aggressor. 44 seconds to be aggressive. The girl has got to look for something to turn it around. One, two, three combination. The girl comes after him. Fletcher accommodates him. It's a wrestling close. Still no score from that exchange. Two points for the girl to make up. Fletcher is trying to stay away so he doesn't get another point against him. He knows he's got a two-point lead. Coming up to 25 seconds, and it's still anybody's fight. If DeGale comes in and lands a combination, he could equal it. Beautiful. Beautiful. That may do it. That should do Beautiful. it. DeGale attacks back. Coming up to 15 seconds. Chewing up the clock now. Now, Fletcher, box, box. Use your boxing skill. Jab and move. Yep, stay away now. He's got a three-point lead. Under 10 seconds. It looks like Fletcher's through to the final. Crowd will start counting it down. He's got another point. He's a winner here. The Australian representative beats England in the semi-final in the middleweight division. Well, <laughs> it was nip and tuck all the way. But Fletcher able to come away in the last round of the fight. A terrific round is scored by the judges. Two tired men. They certainly both put it on the line in the last round, didn't they, George? They both they tried did. very, very hard. Now, this Eight. is what you travel to see. Competitive fights like this. 8-3 it was in the final round to the Australian in the red corner, Fletcher. Previous round was even, 4-all. DeGale won the second, 3-2, and the first was tied. So pretty well from the first bell. There was little between these two guys. 
Yeah, no, it was nip and tuck all the way, and the Australian Jared Fletcher got on top in the last 30 seconds. The official result to the red corner, and Jared Fletcher to fight for the gold medal in the middleweight division here in Melbourne 2006. So we move to the business end of the week. It means that DeGale will receive the bronze medal. That's how the five judges scored it over the rounds. Very little in it. Four scoring punches more to Jared Fletcher of Australia over James DeGale. Out they come for the first round of the second semi-final of the heavyweight division. Brad Pitt of Australia in the red and Orson Yakini from Ghana in the blue. Our special guest commentator, former world heavyweight champion, George Foreman. Boy, now the good thing is they're both orthodox, so now you can use your feet both for to use the left jabs and right hand crosses. Pitt has got a very good jab. Uh, sometimes he needs to use it more, but he has got a very good jab, the uh, Australian representative in the red. Yukini has got a quick, sneaky right hand. Yukini's win over the Scotsman Simmons, 32-9, was very impressive. Got caught with a good right hand by Pitts. Pitts landed a good right hand at that. As you can see, Yakini is powerful. Yeah, very strong man, Awusain Yakini from Ghana. He's on the board with one point at this stage of round one. It's one all now. Brad Pitt landing with the right hand. Now, Pitt is the more skillful, it seems, of the two. His combinations are right, in, right down the middle, not a wild or anything. Brad Pitt from Frankston in Melbourne. And many people would say you've got to be tough to come from Frankston. <laughs> now, you would think the fight should get a little closer for Yakini. Doesn't have the, the advantage of the reach, so he would hope to get just a little closer. <laughs> Good uh, combination from the Australian, puts him into the lead. It's going well there. Yakini coming back. Pitt boxing well with under 30 seconds remaining of round one. Uh, Yakini wants to get his jab off, but because he's being beat to the punch, he's real uh, reluctant to really get it out there. This is a chance for Yakini to get active. Don't wait. Ten seconds to go, round one. Pitt was so fast on his feet as well. Coming up to the bell. And Yakini trying to land a shot right on the bell, but it will be a narrow win in the first round to the red corner. Brad Pitt of Australia, five points to four. Slow motion. Good left from Yakini. This is a evenly matched fighter. One misses and the other makes him pay for it. Roberto Andreas there, having a few words to Brad Pitt. His results earlier. Breathing heavily and looking to uh, stand in the corner. And Yakini's results both on points 14 12 and 32 19. So the one against Simmons, a pretty high scoring affair. Now they come now for round two. Brad Pitt of Australia, Orison Yakini from Ghana. Second semi final of the heavyweight division. He wanted to take on Harpreet Singh for the gold medal. Uh, Pitt looking for openings, wants to get that left, good left jab he's got out there. He's got a beautiful jab, Brad Pitt of Australia, the heavyweight representative when he gets it going. Goes in that exchange, goes out to a lead of three. Now Pitt is really doing a good job, but most of his punches come after Yukini lands. So you've got to be careful trying to be the counter puncher and building points. At some point you've got to attack. Then you surely to win this thing. There you go, get aggressive. Bit away to a four point lead here. Under just over a minute remaining round two. Using his left jab well, moving well, Pitt. Yukini 
Now, he got aggressive. You see, the punch comes so much easier when you get aggressive. A good round for the Australian. Eight points to two so far with under 50 seconds to go. Well, with the point system, you can catch up real quick. You keenly decide to don't wait for one good punch. That's what he's trying to do. Just throw a, lo a lot of punches. Yeah, I think Yukini's uh, trying to land that big right hand he's got. Pitts is too long-legged and too long-armed. It you just can't get him with one shot. Yes, now he's been boxing well. But at that weight class, a big punch can come anytime and can change the pattern of the fight immediately. We saw that in the first semi, didn't we? Did we ever? Did we? <laughs> <laughs> the guy was looking like I can't believe it. Oh. What a good right hand that time. Drop that over the top nicely. Handy lead now to Pitt. Yukini trying to come back late in the round. Been a great round for uh, Brad Pitt. 11 points to three. The judges scored it after 5-4 in the first. So 16-7 at the halfway stage of the bout. Clear, clear lead to Brad Pitt there. Let's have a look at this on slow motion. Beautiful left First jab. time you lead, he lands. Then he gets back and wait for the counter. This is where he's more dangerous. After you misses him, comes back and gets you. That was that little right hand he dropped over the top. It was a good shot too. Big scar on his face there, but we don't believe from boxing. No, that wouldn't be from boxing. Hey, George, that scar that you can, he's got under the chin. Under the, uh, yeah, it looks there. like maybe a tribal scar. Something like that, yes. The Ghanaian. When you get cut under the eye, it's not as bad as over the eye. Yep. Did you get many, many cuts? Many, many times not many, not many. I had many. stacks. Yeah, we know. I had we, stacks. We could tell. <laughs> we could tell. <laughs> had 300 stitches, George. All, <laughs> all of my cuts were from inside. <laughs> Big crowd here at the Melbourne Exhibition Centre, and they cheer the boxers on as Pitt and Yakini come out for the second half. This is round three. Yakini has to do something here. The fight is slipping away from the Garnon. Oh, Usain Yukini. The good Pitt. thing about for Yukini is that these heavyweights get tired. All of that moving turns around on you, so you can catch up. With, as you can see, the points coming back now. We both scored in that previous exchange. Yukini knows he's got to do more. Pitt comes after him again. And Yukini can take a good shot. He's able to absolve the punishment and come back. Brad Pitt with a 10-point lead, the Australian. A good, certainly a big big lead in uh, a heavyweight bout with, what have we got, about three minutes remaining. One minute in this round and two in the final round. Getting awkward in close, both working to the body. Yukini, if he's going to stay in this, he needs to get some scores on the board. Brad Pitt doing an excellent job of making him miss and countering. That counter punch, he does well. As a matter of fact, he does as, as good as anyone I've seen in, that, in the amateur division. Yes, now he's certainly improved dramatically, Brad Pitt. He's, uh, he's in this competition, he's, he's showing that he's uh, a very good boxer indeed. Nice counter again as he leant back and landed the right hand. Now, Yukini was able to get in a straight right hand that time. But it was only one punch. You can't do it with one punch. They want you to throw a number of punches. 4-2, the Australian winning the round. The two must separate them. That's that counter right hand again. He does it whenever he wants. Coming up 10 seconds, round three. Brad Pitt with a nine-point lead. He's going to carry into the final round. Boy, his legs are tired, though. Brad Pitts is kind of leaning forward. There it is, the end of the round, the end of round three. The margin is nine. The round was even. The five judges scoring at four points all, and Brad Pitt to take an 11-point advantage, sorry, a nine-point advantage into the final round. It was a wrestle for a while. Both boys looking pretty tired, George. I like it because they're both... They both have a different strategy, and you can see 
uh, pit strategy seems to be working better. Yukini, Yukini, he seems to got off the scope a little bit on what he was supposed to do, and now he's trying to do the things that Pitt is doing. That's the problem. Going into the last one round, eight. one round to go. George, I, I had to say that Yukini would need a knockout in the fourth round. Is uh, nine points with two minutes remaining going to be hard to draw back for him? He probably needs a knockout, wouldn't you think? Yeah, you know what? Pitts surprisingly legs are tired. Yep. So it's not to think that a knockout is out of the question. But Yukini hasn't just been stragging along too. Final round, Brad Pitts and also Yukini. Special guest commentator George Foreman thinks that Pitt might be a little tired in the legs. Let's see how he works over the last 1 minute and 50 seconds. He landed a good countering right back then. Yukini putting on a lot of pressure. He's putting the pressure on. And you see, the reason he's tired, Pitt, is because he's doing so much movement with his feet. And you have to push this guy away from the constant. Look, there are the legs. That takes it out of him. And as hands are to his size, he's getting a second win. Be careful of the left hook. Yukini has got a powerful left hook. Running out of time to land it, though. He's got a big right hand, too, Yukini. But Brad Pitt doing a good job here. Staying away from the power of the big Ugandan, uh, the big Ghanaian, or also Yukini. Brad Pitt boxing well. Yukini has got to get a knockout. He can't play around waiting for the fight to start. He's got to stay on top of Pitt. And Pitt has got to just use his boxing skill. Left to right, hold occasionally, jab occasionally. 50 seconds remaining, round four. Is Brad Pitt going to go through to the final? Boxing well at this stage with a good lead. I like his feint. He's using his legs, Brad Pitt, and he's fainting. Half a minute to go in the contest. Usain Yukini from Ghana needs a knockout at this stage, undoubtedly. He's tried desperately hard in this fourth and final round, but Brad Pitt evaded the majority of the shots he's thrown. Moving well, Brad Pitt. 22 seconds. Left in round four. Look at the good footwork by Pitt. I like it. I shouldn't like that after what Ali did to me with that. <laughs> <laughs> he's not doing the rope of Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but he's moving good. With he his is feet. moving well. He's got a good rhythm there. He's through to the final. There's no doubt about that. Five seconds remaining round four. Crowd counting it down. And there it is. It's all over. And Brad Pitt on points over Orbison Yakini from Ghana. And he will be fighting Harpreet Singh for the gold medal in the heavyweight division on Saturday. Boy, what an excellent representative he is, huh? He sure is. He boxed beautifully. He's uh, done Australia proud so far. Young Brad Pitt from Frankston. And he had to have all his skills together because this Yakini boy is tough as nails. So, a mere formality now, the results. Both boys called to centre ring. As we await the decision of the five judges, confirmed that Brad Pitt is scoring 5-2 in the final round. The third round was split at 4-all. The official announcement, Brad Pitt, and he will fight Harpreet Singh in the final of the heavyweight division on Saturday, Australian time. That's going to be a good fight. Will the, be a good fight. The puncher and the boxer. I don't want to be there to see that. <laughs> Fighting my nails. We're looking forward to it. And, uh, George, we, we thank you for coming up this afternoon. We know uh, that your time is very valuable while you're here in Australia. And uh, it has given Barry and myself a great thrill to talk to one of the all-time greats of world sport, not just boxing, but world sport. Out they come now for the second semi-final. Lightweight division, Zapavinia and Gavin. The Australian fighting in the red, Gavin fighting in the blue. Zapavinia on the attack immediately. What we've seen in all his preceding bouts, he, he gets on the board early. Is he going to do the same with Frankie Gavin? He's trying. He's got the first points. Frankie Gavin back. We've got the former World Super Middleweight Champion Richie Woodall behind me with his uh, 
co-commentator Jimmy, they fancy Frankie Gavin to beat the Australian boy. What a surprise. Yeah, what a surprise. Will we? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get as good as we get, Barry. This should be the top contest, though. Yes, it's, it's Frankie Gavin, certainly a very classy Southpaw, uh, very hard to beat. And he's, uh, he's got a head to a couple of point lead here. Zapovinia fires back with both hands. Squares it up in the first. This is going to be a ripper. Very classy fighter, Gavin. Good thinker from the southpaw stance. Sees punches well. He even picked off that body shot there. Loser at the bout. Wins the bronze medal. Good little right hand there. But uh, the Englishman gets away to a point lead. 41 seconds remaining of round one. Sapatinia comes after him again. The Englishman pumping out the right lead. Goes to an advantage of two. 30 seconds to go in round one. Sapatinia certainly hasn't dominated this round like he's dominated every other first round we've seen so far. That's and a good, set him back a bit. Yeah, good left hand by Frankie Gavin. Zapovinia finding the south poor style hard to handle at the moment. Very neat boxer indeed, Frankie Gavin. Close to the end of the round, Zapovinia not getting the start that he wanted. We haven't seen this with him so far in the Australian's other bouts. He's uh, all at the end of the first round had a big lead. He's got a, he's six points down, the Australian at the end of the first round. Well, clearly, oh. Gavin outpointing the Aussie there pretty well from go to woe. As you said, Barry, not handing the the, uh, the southpaw style at all of the Englishman. A good shot there from Lenny Zapovinia, but overall he was outsmarted. He was outboxed by the man in the blue, Frankie Raymond Gavin from England. A neat, neat tall south. <laughs> Coach Bodo Andreas in the corner with uh, Lenny Zapovinia. Now they come now for the second round, the second round of the second semi final. Zapovinia giving Gavin a pretty hefty start. It's a couple of points. He's on the attack in a big way. It's what the crowd wants to see. And a distance is where he finds Frankie Gavin very difficult. And Frankie Gavin can use that long reach of his. Very awkward customer is Gavin, as Zapovinia is finding out. And picked off as he comes in. This man was a gold medalist in the Commonwealth Boxing Championships in Scotland last year, Frankie Gavin. Easy to see why. Yeah, very clever Southpaw. Oh, oh, lovely shot. That staggered the Australian, but he bounces back, cops another one as he comes in. Big lead to the Englishman. Frankie Gavin getting away in the second round. The bout's already starting to slip away from Lenny Zapovinia. Nice right lead again from Gavin. Less than 50 seconds of the round to go. It's another good one to the Brit. Zapovinia landed with a good right hand there. Being picked off by the Southpaw's right jab. In particular, the jab beating him. And he's been caught with some good left hands from the southpaw as well. He's a good, he's a good boxer all round, Frankie Gavin. He goes up and down, he hits the body, he can counter, he can attack. Boxing's all about learning, and uh, Lenny Zepavinia learning a little bit tonight, but he'd prefer it was the other way around. Yeah, I'm sure. Look, Lenny Zapovinia, he's, he's a late substitute. If he does lose here, and it looks like well on the cards at this stage, he's done Australia proud. He'll win a bronze medal. And uh, he's, he you know, has shown that he's a great, great prospect for the future. But a very big round of uh, Frankie Raymond Gavin from England. He's won both rounds so far, and both of them convincingly similar scores. 9-3 in the first, 9-4 in the second. 
beautiful jab there from Gavin. So Australia's drought in this division looks as though it's going to continue. But uh, it's not over yet. The margin is 11, but he'd need to make every post a winner in this round. <laughs> Frankie Gavin very cool in the corner. Bato Andreas giving instructions. And that would be the, the youngest member of the Australian team. The late substitute, he's done incredibly well. Still going, if he loses, he's guaranteed a bronze medal. No box off for third in the Commonwealth Games. Two bronze medals being awarded to the losing semi finalists. Out they come for the third round in the lightweight division, second semi final, Zappavinia against Gavin, the winner to fight Giovanni from 10 in the final on Saturday. Oh, Zappavinia nailed with a left hand, jolted his head back. The left, straight left from the south cross dance. Caught with a left uppercut there. Frankie Gavin looking extremely confident here. It's a bit of a clinic put on by Gavin at the moment. Oh, yeah, he's, he's a clever fighter. Getting to the stage even now in the third round that Zabavinia needs a knockout to win the fight. Oh, he needs a knockout. But can't outpoint this guy. He's just too, he's just too sharp for Zabavinia. Too experienced. He's had a lot of it, a lot more experience than Zappavinia. Crowd urging Zappavinia on, but mind you, his opponent's got plenty of friends That's in it. the crowd as well. That's it. 20 points. 7, 20 points. They've stopped it's all it. over. Any boxer gets to within 20 points ahead. Bout is automatically stopped in the first three rounds. And with the score 9 0 in that round. It was just one-way traffic in favour of Frankie Gavin from England, from Birmingham, and uh, he totally outclassed Australia's Lenny Zappavinia in the semi-final. So he wins through to the gold medal bout on Saturday afternoon, Australian time. A convincing winner today, Barry, and on that form, he would be pretty hard to beat in the final. Yes, uh, well, it's a... Giovanni it's a, Frontan, I mean, crack, different styles, but... Different styles, it's a cracking final, it really is. It's a tall, rangy, southport, clever against a beautiful boxer in Frontan. I'll reserve my opinion until we get to the, get to the, uh, to the final. Frankie Gavin, victorious. And he will make his way from the ring, a very, very confident boxer. That's how the judges scored it because of before it was stopped under the rules. One boxer gets 20 points ahead in the first three rounds. It's all over, and that's what happened there. And the commander's box. It's the second semi-final in the light heavyweight division between Ben McKeekran of Australia and Kenneth Anderson of Scotland. Anderson on the attack straight away, and he's on the board. McKeekran can box well, he can punch, he moves well. He just needs to be a bit cautious. The Scotsman, a big puncher with the right hand. Awesome right hand he's got. This was a division that Australia's Tony Madigan won back-to-back -back gold medals in 1958 and 1962. And Ben McEachran get to fight for the gold. If he loses here, he'll get the bronze. Oh, he got hit with the right hand there. McEachran. We've seen the Scotsman score two. He's got, he's got McEachran in trouble. Landed two right hands there. McEachran was definitely hurt. McEachran lost at this stage in the previous Commonwealth Games in 2002 in Manchester. He lost to Uganda's Joseph Labiga, 16-8. He got caught two right hands. He can't afford to catch too many of those right hands. That dynamite power the Scotsman's got in the right hand. Scotsman away to a big lead. Five points already, under a minute remaining in round one. Crowd a little bit quiet, as you would expect. With the Scot coming out firing on all fours. Oh, there's that right hand Big again. Right hand again, yeah. Can't take too many like that. Doesn't look good at this stage of round one. 30 seconds remaining. 
the Scotchman Kenneth Anderson boxing well, landing the right hand about four times. And his right hand is deadly, believe me. Oh, and again. Well, no answer so far from Ben Bakikra to the big punching Scott. Quarter of a minute to go in the first round. And big right his, hand again. Keekman's all at sea at this stage. Doesn't know how to handle the offence of the dynamite punching Kenneth Anderson from Scotland. Well, huge round there for Kenneth Anderson of Scotland and the crowd a little bit stunned and I dare say so is his Australian opponent. Watch for the right hand. We'll see it come up in the replay, I'm sure. Twice. Three times. Big, their big right hand. And we've seen two of his opponents absolutely poleaxed by that right hand and badly hurt. The kicker in his earlier results are by in the first round. And Bodo Andreas would be uh, having a few words to him. Let's step away from him, all right? Okay. He's got his measure, he's scared of you, so keep the jab up and keep a little pressure on him. He's got his measure, he's scared of you. Okay, all right. Enough to do. Another three I don't know about the matter, but he's got his measure at the Just moment. The on him. You're really going extremely good. Away we go. All right. Yes, Second round of the semi final. Ben McEachran with the job ahead of him, trailing by nine points over Kenneth Anderson of Scotland. McKeekran against uh, the Canadian Hunter box beautifully. He needs to move around to his left, get away. It's easier said than done, but to try and get away from the right hand of, uh, of Anderson. He's been hit with it too many times already. And he needs to move around to his own right. To try and stay away from the power in that right hand from Ken Anderson. At the moment, not looking good. No, it's one way traffic. Three zip so far in this round to the Scott. Three Masoka wanting a clean break. <laughs> Australia not making too much impression on the big lead that his opponent opened up in the first round. In fact, he's increasing it, Anderson. Margin 13, oh. tried the big right hand again. Missed by a fraction. Got dynamite in that right hand, the Scotsman. Remember, if it gets to a 20-point margin in the first, second or third round, it'll be stopped. It's going that way, Barry. Oh, he's getting nailed with the right hand again and again. Yeah, three more points. 46 seconds to go. Doesn't happen this round. I think you'll see the fight uh, stopped in the next round. McKeegan getting hit too much. Well, disappointing for him because he promised so much, but Anderson, as we've seen, the KO oh. specialist. Oof. Just two more telling punches and that will be it. 23 seconds, still time for the Scotsman to do it. What happened there? Head clash. We had a bad head clash. Bad head clash. Lucky there's no lucky with a head guard, otherwise you'd have a bad gash on someone's eye there. Oh, oh that's it. That's it. The end of the that's contest. it. That's it. 20 the points. Over. It is all over. Anderson annihilating McKeekman. 10 1 in the first round, 12 1 in the second. The margin is 20. The fight is stopped. And Kenneth Anderson on that performance will be very hard to beat in the final on Saturday afternoon. Yes, you have to be the favourite, you would think, against uh, Alela Hin from Nigeria. You couldn't be more impressive. The right hand again, as it was in his previous, con previous contest, Barry was the big punch, wasn't it? Was it? the winner. He's just got so much power in his right hand. But he can box as well. Yeah, no, he can box as well, and he has got power in his left. But yes, very impressive. He's been impressive all the way through. Ken Anderson from Scotland. <laughs> Boys come to set a ring for the official announcement. So the Scott through to the final of the light heavyweight 81 kilo class.
here in Melbourne 2006 decisively over Australia's Ben McEachran. Referee stopping the contest with the Australian outscored, trailing by 20 points. So look, this is going to be a cracker of a fight, but uh, the Welshman, certainly a lot more experienced than the Welshman, and I guess he'd certainly be the hot favourite. Kevin Evans against Australia's Steve Rudy. Rudy in the red. Big men indeed. In excess of 91 kilos. Steve Rudick's done very well. Considering he's a relative novice, as you said, he uh, gave up basketball. And he's look, you know, he's done incredibly well. He's already booked himself a medal. Let's see if he can get into the final. This event first held in the Commonwealth Games in 86. Australia's only medalist in it, Justin Whitehead. He won bronze in 98. Good, good work from Rudick there early. Looking to counter over the top of Rudick's lead. Clever boxer, the Welshman. Rudick looking to score the right hand and does. Evens it up to all. Oh. Caught on the ropes, he'll need to fight his way out of there. Welshman on the attack with two hands, but Rudick handling it well. Not getting hit much there, got caught there. Big bombs from Evans. Half a minute to go in round one. The oh. Australian in trouble. Evans goes after him. Oh, big shot there. He hangs on the Australian. He'll get an eight count. Three, four, eight points to two so far on the judges' scorecards. Pointless arguing with the referee. It's only, one, it's only one point anyway, but to Kevin Evans looking confident. What's happened here? Have we got cut or? Not quite happy. He's got a big cut, has he? Under the eye? Just can't see it from that angle. No. no they... It's on the other side. <laughs> I want him to turn around the other way, and the doctor wants him to turn to the. Oh, he's got a cut under the eye. Okay, at this stage. If it was above the eye, it would be more of a problem. Yes. Rudick has, in the meantime, had some breathing space. There goes the bell for the end of the round. A very good round to Kevin Evans of Wales over Australia's Steve Rudick. Here we are. Evans attacking. Now Rudick with the right hand there once, once plainly. There's Rudick on the attack. I thought he was a bit unlucky not to get a point for one of his right hands that he landed. Big round to Evans, though, with the big, lead of eight. Big round. Certainly got to attack in this round to get himself back on the board if he's going to hang in there. Certainly with Boy's confidence that uh, the Welshman's got an eye injury, I would think. Doesn't appear to be a problem, though. This guy is shy when you put pressure on him, but be cool now. They come for the second. Second of four rounds. We're in the super heavyweight division. Rudick and Evans, the Aussie with the job ahead of him. Rudick on the attack. Using his left jab well there. A big deficit to make up. He's, he sure has. Well caught with the jab again. Mind you, in this weight division, one punch can finish it very quickly. And turn it round in a split second. That's better. Chopping right hand from Rudick there. Goes the right to the body, tries to come up the head. Evans throws the jab, ticks the left hand out. Two all so far in the round. Good oh. left lead from Evans. Very and, again. and again. And again. Oh, big right hand. 
Evans throwing Bond. Oh, three right hands over the top there. Were they foul blows or what? Referee Michael Gallagher pretty busy in this contest. Not surprisingly. <laughs> Evans fires a couple of shots to the body. Rudick tries a big right hand, misses. One sided though on the scoreboard. The jab beating him, the left hand of Evans landing continually. Former basketballer in a bit of bother. Just over half a minute of round two remaining. He's trying to chop with the right hand. Rudy caught with a big right hand. Comes back in. Four more points and it'll be over. Evans, huge lead at this stage. There's the jab again. The jabs have been a winner for Evans all the way through. The first and second round. Eight, nine seconds to go, round two. Rudick will get through this round. He's Evans is uh, referee looking at Evans' eye. I think it's okay, not a problem. Just a few seconds left in the second. So Rudick's aim will be to survive to the third. He should do that now. There's that, that little stiff jab. The jab been a winner for Evans. Had a great punch. Yeah. 16 the margin. At the end of two rounds, 10-2 and 12-4. Huge deficit. Here we are in slow motion. The left jab, as you see, has been a winner for Evans. Oh, and the right hand there. Now that was a bit... Oh, that was... Oh, was chopping a rabbit there. That's what they call rabbit punching. And uses the forearm. Pretty rough, the Welshman. Got away with it. Yeah, pretty rough. There's the left hand that's done oh, so much damage. And a big right hand. Follow it up. The jab set him up for everyone. No problem with the eye, that'll be okay. Yeah, doesn't look bad. A couple of bruises under the eyes, but a little bit of a nick, nothing serious. Or is it, uh, Lead of 16. Third round. What can you tell? What would you tell him in the corner? He just got to get out and try and get on target. Easier said than done. The Welshman's left hand too educated. The jab, the winner for him. It's opening up opportunities for his right like that. And again, two more blows. No, back to two more. Yes, one, one more. Any second now. The oh, he fires back. Rudy comes back. Fires back. Brings the crowd to life. Yes, and a left hook. Just as it's nearly over. Oh, he's a long way down the gurgler, but he's showing some guts. He's got plenty of ticker. The big man. Oh, big right hand bomb from Rudick. And again, and again, he's clubbing him with the right hand. He's yep. got some heart, this man. Oh. Evans can be hit. Rudick's finding that out. His eyes looking a bit uglier. Yeah, it the is too. His right eye and his left eye, oh. they're both coming up. Evans Whoa. piles into him again. One minute, 12. Margin back to 18. The eye's not looking good, I'm telling you. Actually, if he can survive till the last round, Rudick, he might have a chance. Yeah, it could be a stoppage. The eye's not looking good. Doctor called up again. He's okay. shaking his head, is he? He's going to stop it, I think. Is he, is he going to stop it? No, no. He's no. letting it go. Uh, Rudick's got to really concentrate here. Two more shots. Three more shots now. Bang, bang. He can fight his way One out of the corner. One more and it's over. One more shot. One minute to go. I think he's out. Yes. The Australian has fought valiantly. There's a big one. Two more again. Bang. Wow, what a war this is. That's it. That's it. That'll do it. That's it. Blood streams out of the Welshman's nose as well. He looks a battered winner indeed, the Welshman. <laughs> a Pyrrhic victory. Wow. Sensational stuff. A great, valiant effort by the big man from Australia, Australia Stephen Rudick. He fought valiantly. He's a relative novice in this caper, and I'll tell you what, he did very well. Gets him, books himself a bronze. He fought back with the heart of a lion. We'll never know, Barry, if he had it lasted another round. Oh, they might have stopped the fight. I, I think and, they would have had and to. Rudick could have got it. I think they would have had to stop it. It was very close. Look at his face. So he's been hit by a bus. Yeah. 
Anyway, he will be fighting for the gold medal come the weekend here in Melbourne. Uh, Steve Rudick, terrific effort. I know he set his sights on fighting for Australia and Beijing. We go down to Michael Gallagher, our referee, who will hold aloft the arm of the winner. Kevin Evans from Wales emerges victorious from a slugfest. It's Steve Rudick from Australia. That's how the judges scored it. It was pretty one-sided, but as I said, if Rudick hadn't lasted that round, who knows what might have happened in the last with that eye and the cuts he had. It could have been stopped. Anyway, that didn't happen. Yes, very happy to see the end of that bout. I reckon the Welshman, but he boxed well. His left jab with the winner has set him up for... Uh, his combination, but his jab landed time and time again. It's the final of the middleweight division. Jared Fletcher of Australia against Adonis Stevenson from Canada. Adonis Stevenson, as, as I said, look at the physique on the man. He's a very strong, big middleweight. And very fast hands. But I reckon as Jared Fletcher off to a good start there, attacking well. He needs to land his right hand like he did there against his southpaw opponent and move to the left keep away from the power in the left hand of the big southpaw from canada adonis stevenson oh stevenson looking strong there but the australian a point up here in the first round he's got to keep moving and he's got to land that right down the middle against his southpaw opponent Stevenson with a height advantage, but both came in at the weight limit of 75 kilos. Yeah, he's a big middleweight, Stevenson. Certainly well, very well beat, built, very well built indeed. There's the right hand. That's the that's the punch for a southpaw. Straight down the middle, straight through the past the right jab from the southpaw stance. Yes, good very shot. good by Jared Fletcher. Off to a good start here. 50 seconds remaining round one. Fletcher boxing well against his Southpaw opponent at this stage. Stevenson originally from Port-au-Prince in Haiti. Stevenson needs to keep moving to the left if possible. Like that, away from the power in the big man's left hand. Landing with the right as he did. That was a good body shot from Adana Stevenson. In one of his previous bouts, he dropped a guy with a left hook to the body. Shaping up as a high scoring first round. Yep. Oh, that was excellent by the Australian middleweight representative, Jared Fletcher. And again. Good combinations from the Aussie close to the end of the first round. Stevenson jabbing out the left from too far away. The end of round one, and the judges, the five of them, had scored at 8 5 in favour of the blue quarter, Jared Fletcher of Australia. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from round one. Big left hand from the Aussie. And electing to stand during the break between rounds. More of a psych job, Barry, than anything else. Yep, yep, he's trying to uh, use every advantage he can over his opponent. The results of uh, Stevenson so far had a buy in the first round, as did his opponent. Two of those went inside the distance. He beat Shimwemwe Chiocha on points convincingly in the middle shot there, 31 to 9. All these victories have been uh, very dominant for Donna Stevenson. But then again, Jared Fletcher, um, his first fight was a brilliant performance against Obadiah Sai from Ghana. Close against the Gale. 17-13. Yeah, Degal was uh, a southpaw like uh, Stevenson and probably the favoured uh, to beat the Australian. But the, um, we end up uh, beating the Australian ended up beating the Englishman Degal 17-13 in a tough close fight. But it was very boxed very well by Fletcher. He's doing a good job here. He's away to a good lead. He's got the first two points of the round. Oh, the right hand landing perfectly against his southpaw opponent. That's what you need to do against a southpaw. Make that three. Oh, look, he's, not, he's, he's got Stevenson's measure, you can see it. Unless he gets caught with something big, he's boxing very well. Five zips so far to the Australian in this round. Jared Fletcher, 142 amateur bouts, 120 wins. Pretty impressive record for, for a young bloke. Well, he really is carrying it right up to the bigger Canadian at the moment. He sure is. An excellent 
start to the second round for him. One minute remaining, round two. He's got a big lead. He's boxing very well. Seven points to zero, Barry. Yep. And a standing count on Stevenson. He's on his way to gold. Jared Fletcher. Margin of 10 in the contest. Some boxers handle southpaws and some don't, but this is a case of a boxer handling a southpaw with expertise. Very well. As I said, the, his performance against James DeGale, the Englishman, who was a southpaw and a very crafty southpaw and would have probably been the favourite in that contest, showed that he knows how to fight a southpaw. DeGale, we understand, was unhappy about that result. Yes, yes, I did hear a mate of mine uh, caught up with the British team and DeGale thought he was a bit unlucky there. But, Eight uh, one in this round. Flat, Fletcher boxing very well. Good shots by the Australian again, close to the end oh. of the round. He's down! Yes, that was Fletcher a big, down. Big right hook. Still, he's got a 10-point lead. It's a big lead. Got to be careful. Stevenson always dangerous. Ooh. Certainly shook him up, but there goes the bell for the end of the round. A good round of the Australian, 10-3, but uh, Stevenson, as you said, dangerous. Got the big shot in close to the end of it. Here we are, there's that right hand from Jared Fletcher, straight down the middle. Beautiful shot. Well timed against his Southport opponent. Here we go. Left hand, it was short left. left hand, right to the point of Fletcher's chin. I think we should explain for viewers new to amateur boxing, Barry, the scoring is different to the professionals. Yep. A knockdown won't give him the round. One punch, one point. The knockdown is just the score of one point, even with an eight count. In professional boxing, you win the round immediately with a knockdown, either 10 8 or 5 3. But uh, Jared Fletcher's got to watch that left hand indeed. Out they come to the third round. Maybe Fletcher has uh, a little bit more respect for Stevenson now after going down in the previous round. He's got to try to outbox him. Stevenson knows that he can get the measure of the Australian in the power stakes, perhaps. Fletcher the faster of the two and co using combinations well. Landing, landed his right hand on... And again there. He's got the right hand working perfectly against his southpaw opponent. He's got to be careful, though. He's a strong man, this guy. And a pinpoint puncher too, uh, Stevenson. He comes straight down the middle. He's, he's punches, his punches are very straight and, and fast as well. 11-point lead to Jared Fletcher. Ooh. Ooh -hoo, big, big uppercut there from Stevenson. The Canadian, I think, already feels as though he needs a knockout. 11 points. It's a long way to come back. Uh, holding. From uh, uh, referee Giorgio Brunoli from England. Fletcher boxing very defensively this round. Not surprisingly, perhaps. Yep, that was good. Good left hand. And some blood is there on the nose of the Canadian. Yeah, no wonder he's been hit by about a dozen. Classic right hand from Jared Fletcher. Margin is 12, 4-2 to Fletcher in round three after being sent to the canvas in the previous stanza. Yeah, no, I think he's got the Canadian's measure. He just needs to stay on his feet and keep doing what he's doing. And he'll be Australia's first gold in the Commonwealth Games in 2006. Got to be careful. Three quarters of a minute of the round remaining. Stevenson really getting desperate now, trailing by 10. Some big shots coming from Adonis. A nice left hand from Fletcher. Nice right hand. The right hand's been the winner for Fletcher. Making the Canadian miss. He needs to. He's, he knows he needs a knockout, the Canadian. He's looking for it. Oh, he's strong. Big shot. Big body shot and a big head shot there from Stevenson. Ten seconds to go in the round. Nice right hand again. Jared Fletcher appears that he's on his way to gold. He's got one more round after this, but certainly boxing well. There goes the bell for the end of round three, and the Australian 
a match winning lead you'd reckon if he can stay on his feet he, he's got to watch that power of this this guy look at that that was a big left hand that wobble and that body shot that was a ripper of a body shot testament to jared fletcher's fitness he took that body shot very well let's go down to the ringside Over to Stevenson. And also Danny, he's only told the one thing. Couldn't pick up too much of that barrier. Right. I did detect uh, no. Bado saying keep your hands up. That was a bad keep, your, keep your hands up and box. But this Jared Fletcher, the Australian representative in the middleweight division, 75 kilograms. If he stays on his feet, he's going to win the gold medal. He's got to watch the power of the, the big punching of Donna Stevenson from Canada. Oh, Fletcher Stevenson caught there. Comes after him. Stevenson's been told that he needs a knockout. He sure does. He trails by 13. It's One a, point each so far in the round. It's a big lead to the Aussie. There's the right hand. The right hand's won the contest for him. He's boxed beautifully against a very dangerous southpaw indeed in Adonis Stevenson. Needs to move away from the power in the left hand of the big man. Those two taking on the gloves. Stevenson trying to land the big shot for a knockout that will give him the contest. Oh, one for one there. Beautiful right hand. The right hand has won this bout for Jared Fletcher. Four all in the round. He just he just needs to be cautious now. Coming up oh, to a minute. Big right hand again. The right hand's a winner. Perfect, perfect uh, tactics against the Southpaw. Moving around the ring the right way. Stevenson tries to nail him. Under a minute. Under a minute to go. Adonis Stevenson needs a knockout. He's not going to get it. The Aussie's going to win the middleweight gold. He's outscoring Stevenson again in this round, 6-4. Fletcher knows he's got a huge lead now. And he's still, 30 seconds to go. He's still throwing that right hand. He's still landing. Adonis Stevenson running out of time. The Aussie being very elusive, still boxing well and landing that right hand. He's hit the Canadian with so many right hands, it's not funny. He's, co he's uh, confident now. Oh, yeah. The body language says that he's got it. Ten seconds to the gold medal for the first Australian to win a boxing gold medal here in the Melbourne Commonwealth Games 2006. And there it is. He's got gold. Crowd counts it down. And Jared Fletcher takes the gold from Adonis Stevenson of Canada. He won every round, 8-5, 10-3, 8-5, and 8-5. Decisively on points, Jared Fletcher outpointing Adonis Stevenson. He fought a very clever fight against the Southpaw. The right hand won him the bout, and the way he moved, it was very good. Stevenson landing a big left hand there, but he didn't land enough of them. Oh, very powerful man. There's the right the hand, Barry. Yeah, that won the bout for Jared Fletcher. Timed it to perfection. He copped the big left hand himself there. Another right. Came, came straight back. And another one. Oh. Stevenson's oh, yeah. moment of glory came in the second round when the Australian hit the canvas. But we go down to ringside for the official announcement. It is to Jared Fletcher on points from Adonis Stevenson of Canada. After Australia won three gold in Manchester, and that's our first for Melbourne 2006. That's how the judges scored it, and each round went to the Australian. Dominant in the second round. The paradox of that was, of course, that was when he got sat on his backside. <laughs> yeah, he, he certainly was shaken, but he recovered quite quickly. As I said, a testament to his fitness. He was hit with some big body shots well, and recovered well. He's got to watch out for the power in the Indian's left hand, but he's the faster of the two. It's the final of the heavyweight division, 91 kilo class here at the Melbourne Exhibition Centre, Harpreet Singh of India against Australia's bad, uh, Brad Pitt in the blue. Brad Pitt needs to uh, take a, a leaf out of Jared Fletcher's book. Stop. 
the way he fought against his southpaw opponent. He needs to move to the left, use his right hand a lot, but be careful of the power in the Indian's left hand. Yes, Anderson Emanuel would vouch for that. Yes, would he ever. First Good. round knockout. Two beautiful right hands to start the round for the Australian. Australian heavyweight representative Brad Pitt. A huge following here for him. Huge support. Tales from the Mornington Peninsula here in Victoria. Frankston actually Brad Pitt, but his uh, mother, we believe, runs the Blair Gary News Agent. News Agency. Which is just a little bit further down the line. I'm sure there's a stack of people down in that area supporting Brad Pitt here today. The referee Mohammed Khan wants a clean break. Pitt got the only two scoring punches at the moment. Just being a little careful, respectful of each other. And he gets the third one on the board, so a handy start. Clubbing right hand from his opponent, Safrit Singh, not scored. We know the Indian is dangerous with his left hand in, partic in particular. He hasn't landed a clean shot yet. Brad Pitt boxing well. Handy start to the Australian early days, first round. Less than half a minute to go. Good combination there too. Five points, a good lead, 20 seconds remaining round one. Harpreet Singh at this stage having trouble catching the Australian heavyweight. And he finally gets on the board, Harpreet Singh, in that exchange of punches, but the Australian also scored. Pitt's got the faster hands. Needs to be careful with that. There's big power in the left hand of the Indian. We've seen it more than once in the games here. There's the bell for the end of round one. And uh, five judges at ringside here at the Exhibition Centre scoring at 6-1 to Brad Pitt over Harpreet Singh of India. What did, what did you think of the first round, Barry? Well, he, 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 boxed, uh, he boxed very smartly, Brad Pitt. His uh, right hand was uh, scored most of the points for him. Um, you know, he's, he's keeping away from the power in the Indian's left hand, which we know he's got uh, undoubted power in that left hand. We've seen him, especially the knockout over um, Anderson, uh, Andrew Anderson with Barbados. That was uh, 25 seconds in the first round. He dropped him with one left hand to the chin. So Brad Pitt's doing the right thing. He needs The Australian needs to move to his left and try and keep away from that power, but doing a good job at this stage. And like Fletcher, standing between the rounds, mind you, his opponent's doing as well, trying to outsike each other. Crowd finding voice here for the second round of this contest between Brad Pitt of Australia and Harpreet Singh of India. So far, the Australian with a good lead, but we come up for round two. Harpreet Singh certainly needs to lift his uh, lift his work rate. Needs to throw more punches. Needs to take some some chances if he's going to get uh, back into the fight. Brad Pitt, as I said, the, got the faster hands. Got caught with a big left hand there. Brad Pitt. Over Andreas. Looking on closely. A few Indian supporters in the crowd too. Wanting to see Singh unload. Alfred Singh fighting with his hands by his sides. He's trying to line the Australian up for that big left hand. Look, you can see it. Gets caught with the right though as he came in. One scoring punch apiece so far in the second. Pitt having a few words to say there too. Getting tangled up in close. Not a hot, not a high scoring round this one. Singh trying for that opening, looking for the opening. Pitt missing with his right hand there. Australian needs to move away from that left hand. Move to the left like that. Tries the right drive to the body. Ooh, a punch to the back of the neck won't uh, endear himself to the referee Singh. At this stage, Harpreet Singh, the Indian heavyweight, having trouble with pit speed. The speed is the defining thing so far here. Well, that is what George Foreman saw in him that he liked the other day when we had him as a guest commentator. Yep. He was 
was quite impressed with uh, Brad Kitt's performance there. And that was solid, good work. And again. And again, yes. A good finish to the round by Brad Pitt. Landing his punches and getting it, getting away, not giving Harpreet Singh a chance to counter. Close to the end of the round. Well, you know, the big worry was the left hand. It's no stage so far in two rounds has Brad Pitt been hurt. Well, for the end of round two, we're at the halfway stage of the final of the heavyweight division. And Harpreet Singh trailing Australia's Brad Pitt 11 to 3. A bruising affair early in the round. Good right hand by the Australian there as the Indian came in. Now five judges scored at 5-2 to Brad Pitt. And most of those blows were landed in the last 30 seconds of the round. It was, a, as I said, a bruising affair early on. Yeah, Harpreet Singh trying to take the fight up to the Australian and getting tangled up there inside and really you know, not doing much uh, scoring of his own. If you're in his corner, you, you would think they'd certainly want him to lift his work rate in the third round. Otherwise, the gold medal's going to go to Australia in the heavyweight division. Now they come for round three. Brad Pitt leading Harpreet Singh 11 points to three. First point of the round. Harpreet Singh not using his right jab at all, virtually. I mean, from the southpaw stance, you'd think he'd be putting the jab out. Certainly needs to lift his work rate, the Indian. At this stage, Brad Pitt on his way to gold. You've got to say that. One minute 20 of round three. Got a good lead. He's got to keep throwing leather. It's not the... Uh weight of the punch but the number that gets scored seeing stalking the Australian but not throwing enough yeah now it's surprising that he's work right every time he does try something though Pitts moves and he's out of the way and then counters like that and then he's gone got stung there Five. Brad Pitt moving well. Harpreet Singh stalking him, looking for the opening, but it hasn't come so far. And the Australian heavyweight looking good at this stage of round three. Well, the judges agree with you, Barry. It's 5 2 in the round so far. He's just been too quick. So Pitt so far has won every round of the contest with half a minute of the third round to go. He gets on his bike again. Comes to close quarters and scores. A couple of body shots there. Good body shots right and left to the body. Just tries the right to the head of the Indian there. The Indian letting go with both hands, but ineffective punching. This is a big lead. You'd even say now that Singh is going to need a knockout in the last round of his to win it. Yeah, no, he needs a knockout. There's no doubt about oh, that. Big, hand, big right hand again from Pitt. And you know what? Pitt hasn't looked like being hurt. He, he's, he hasn't really looked like being hurt at any stage so far. There's the bell for the end of round three. The judges scoring at 7-2 to the Australian. And Singer so far landed just five scoring punches. One in the first and two each in the second and third. Very clever fight from Brad Pitt. And there's that big right hand. Uses his speed. He gets in, lands a couple, and then he gets away before the Indian can counter. The Indian in the Indian's corner now, half reached Singer. He needs a knockout, this man on screen. Trying to fire him up. We, we know the, the big Indian has got the punching power. Can he catch this man? Brad Pitt boxing a very clever fight. Fourth and final round. Out they come. Capacity crowd for the final of the heavyweight division. Brad Pitt leading Harpreet Singh of India. Harpreet Singh on the attack, as you would expect in the fourth and final round. He's 12 points down. It's a big margin in a heavyweight fight in particular. 
It gets on the board again with another shot. Singh Storkin is looking for that big shot. We know the Indian's got the power, but he's just hasn't been able to tag Brad, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt's been too fast. Pitt tagged him then. No, no, anxious at ringside. Singh looking for the knockout, so he might find a different style around. He needs to land that big one. They won in the semi-final inside 30 seconds. Time slipping away. Brad Pitt using the ring, using the perimeter of the ring, staying away. Big lead. Australian on his way to gold. Only a knockout can take it from him here. The Indian's going to have to settle for silver unless he pulls one out of the fire. Harpreet Singh desperately trying to land a big punch. Brad Pitt using his speed, using the ring well. Scores there, and Pitt outscoring him in the final round. Now it's three all. Under a minute to go, the clock's ticking down. Brad Pitt, the heavyweight representative from Frankston. Frankston in Melbourne, on his way to gold. He's boxed a very clever final. Singh now going to the lead in this round. The first round, he's actually been a head in. Well, coming up to 30 seconds remaining. Time's running out for the big Indian. Landing a couple of good body shots there to give him the round so far, 5-3, but it might be too little too late. 11 point difference under 30 seconds to go. Not possible to catch, come up with the amount of punches. And Brad, lands a, Brad Pitt lands a good right hand there. Scored. Big right hook. Five ball. Last quarter of a minute of the fight. It's another goal for Australia. Under 10 seconds, 14 point the lead. Brad Pitt on his way to us to Australia's second gold medal. Crowd counting it down. Gold medal in the heavyweight division. Oh. Brad Pitt has done it. Pitt takes out Australia's second gold here at Melbourne 2006. Back-to-back -back gold for Australia, outclassing Harpreet Singh, 25 to 10. Outboxing Harpreet Singh, he just was too fast. He used his speed very well. He fought a very clever fight. Bodo Andreas had obviously given him some pretty clear instructions and presumably he followed them to the letter. He outthought and outboxed his big-hitting Indian opponent who won his semi-final inside 30 seconds. But today, Brad Pitt, too clever, Barry. He was, he was a very, a very well thought out fight. They did their homework and he stayed away from the big Indies. Powerful left hand. There's the announcement. Brad Pitt taking out the gold medal in the heavyweight division. So this afternoon, it's been three gold to England and two to Australia. That's how the judges scored each round. And Brad Pitt winning every one of them, 6-1-5-2, and scoring seven in each of the final two rounds. It added up to 25-10 for Brad Pitt. So Australia winning three gold in Manchester and going close to matching that here in Melbourne was taking out the two gold medals in which Australians were involved. Us. And it was a gold medal for Australia with Jared Fletcher defeating Adona Stevenson from Canada. First of two Australians in action on finals day here at the 18th Commonwealth Games at the Melbourne Exhibition Centre. And Fletcher taking the points from the well-credentialed and very well-built Canadian. The contest in which he outboxed his opponent clearly and was awarded the gold medal on a convincing points decision. We have two presenters to present the medals. The first of them will be the managing director and CEO of Tabcorp Holdings, Mr. Matthew Slatter. And he will be assisted by the Chief Executive Officer of the Commonwealth Games Association of Canada in Mr. Thomas Jones. Winner of the bronze medal.
two bronze medals being awarded in boxing, the losing semi finalists. James DeGale lost to the ultimate gold medalist in Jared Fletcher, James DeGale of England. And the other losing semi finalist was Warren Fua Balili of Samoa. but just out box today. Yes, Jared Fletcher uh, certainly did Australia proud. Boxed beautifully against his big, strong Southpaw opponent. Commonwealth champion and gold medalist representing Australia. So another success in the middleweight division for Australia. Paul Miller did it in Manchester. He was Australia's first middleweight gold medalist since 1978. And now Jared Fletcher steps up to take gold. Jared Fletcher. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem So for the first time Australia. in the boxing stadium at the 18th Commonwealth Games, the Australian national anthem. to Australia in the 75 kilo class through Jared Fletcher over Adonis Stevenson. Ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge our Commonwealth Games medalists. to the medal ceremony now for the 91 kilogram class at the 18th Commonwealth Games. The heavyweights 91 kilos and it saw the gold medal going to Australia's Brad Pitt defeating Harpreet Singh from India. India's first ever gold medal in this weight division had previously not won anything but a silver today to Harpreet Singh. As far as Australia is concerned, Les Harley won a bronze, Australia's first medal in the division right back in 1938. But we then had to move to 1962 in Perth when Graham Robinson won a bronze and he was the last Australian to win a medal in the event. Sid Cousins, silver medal in 1950. 
previously was Australia's best result. Brad Pitt today taking gold. Our medal presenters today, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth Secretariat, the Right Honourable Donald McKinnon. And alongside him this evening, the President of the Victorian Commonwealth Games Association, Mr. Sol Spatanik. Victorian Commonwealth Games Association. We go to the bronze medals first of all, the losing semi finalists here in Melbourne. Winner of the bronze medal representing Ghana, a He lost in the semi to the ultimate winner, Brad Pitt. And alongside him, Boxer who was defeated by Harpreet Singh inside half a minute in his semi final, Anderson Emanuel. <laughs> Keeney and Emanuel, the bronze medalists. Silver medal representing India. Runner up. Harpreet Singh. India's first medal in the Commonwealth Games at this division. Didn't let the big shots we thought were coming, Barry, did he? No, he just couldn't get on target. Uh, Brad Pitt was just too elusive. champion and gold medalist representing Australia, Bradley Pitt. And the crowd love it. <laughs> Defeated Daniel Price, James Wasayo in the early rounds. Then the Ghanaian, Yakini. And today, over Harpreet Singh of India. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Australia. So for the second time today, Advance Australia Fit. Australia's second gold medal today, Brad Pitt taking up the heavyweight division from Sapreet Singh of India.